Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today we're going to talk about water changes. There's been lots of talk on the internet in the last week or so about people saying, I'm not doing water changes anymore. I don't do water changes and I only do top ups and I only do this. I think it stemmed from a couple of videos some people made, particularly Bob Steen thought about stop doing water changes. I don't think he was actually saying that. I mean, if you actually watch the video, he was saying stop doing water changes quite as often or as frequently as you currently are or for no good reason and they are very different things. Often people will only hear the first five words of any sentence and ignore anything else that goes on after that. So I think possibly quite a few people took that as an excuse to be lazy and not follow any good husbandry guidelines. Um, so I would encourage you to go and watch that video and see what exactly they were saying about why you should stop doing water changes. And to cut a long story short, I think it was probably don't make do a 50% water change your go-to answer for any issue that might be going on in your tank. He was quite rightly advising you to test your water to make sure you knew what was going on. Make sure your tank is seasoned, for want of a better term. Make sure it's established well enough that you know what's going on in your tank to know how often it needs water changes. But fundamentally, as a discus keeper, I can't be doing with this. You can't say stop doing water changes. Water changes are what discus keepers live for. We like to change 100% of water twice a day. So not really. I, I like to say I do two water changes a week, but recently I've been doing one water change a week. The reasons for doing water changes differ depending on what kind of fish you keep, what kind of tanks you're keeping. It's all individuals. So I really like to stay away from these blanket statements of do water changes once a week, do water changes once a month. I like a schedule, personally. If you like a schedule, then stick to it. I like a schedule because it means that I can have a season tank. This tank has been running for years now. I know that the way that I look after it will either make it bloom in algae if I miss a few water changes, or it will be fine if I up the water changes. I like to think I'm an experienced fish keeper and I can tell by what's going on in my tank and whether or not something's not quite right. I don't like to think I'm arrogant enough that I can then use that information to decide what to do because I always go straight to test the water, find out what's going on. So I thought I'd do a bit of a water change and maybe impart some of my thoughts on the subject while I was doing it. So we'll get on that, shall we? So regulars here will know that this is my discus display tank. It's kind of five-ish and a bit foot long by two foot by two and a bit foot. There's a four foot sump underneath down here. Um, there's all kinds of media in there. Go and look at some of my other videos if you want to learn more about the tank itself. It's roughly about 700 litres in total. I like to do it, like I say, weekly water changes, if not twice weekly. Um, but the first thing, first thing that I'll do when I come to the tank to do my water changes is just stand for five minutes, have a look, see what's going on. Um, quite often I'll like to go around to the side and have a look from either end because, quick tip for you, if you look at your tank from this side, it's quite hard to, or it's quite easy to miss some of the algae growth that you might have on the glass. But if you look at it from the side, it's bleeding obvious. So I'll identify where there might be some algae on the glass. So in this case, I've got some here, I've got a little bit down here. I'll go around and I'll clean that before I do anything else. And then we'll start to take the water out. This is actually one of my favorite algae cleaners. It's cheap and cheerful, a bit of plastic. If you lose it, it floats grabs on quite easily. It's never marked the glass. If I can find it, I will leave you a link down in the description. But it really gets off even some of the toughest algae quite easily. Like I say, it will let go sometimes, but it floats. So if you completely lose it, it's easy to get back. And the nice little scrapery bit in the front seems to do a good job at the tougher bits. So I'll go around and I'll clean off all the obvious stuff straight away because what I'm hoping to do is loosen all the gunk, get it into the water column and then I can siphon it out when I start to take some water out which is one of the reasons that you might want to do water changes more often if you have got algae growing in your tank that is a good reason to do water changes if you have a build up of mulm that's more than you want, if it's unsightly, you want to get that out of your tank, water changes are a good way to do that. Next for me, I've cleaned the glass, I'm happy with that, I've done a bit of an inspection of the plants, anything that needs trimming or cutting back, we'll deal with that in a minute, but next stage is just get the water out. So I'm gonna 
click a button down here which stops my sump pump, lets it drain down a little bit. And then I'll go and get my drain hose from out here. So I have my tank here and then just out here on the balcony, I have this little lock box thing. In here we have a hose for draining and a hose for refilling through an HMA filter which lives down here. And I do also have a big hundred and something litre tub where I can preheat water but I don't really need to do that and it's just fine to fill with cold water so I'm only going to do a small change today so we'll grab this hose and start getting the water out. So it's as simple as I take this end, stick it in the tank we have a little flap here you can see that hopefully in there in the aquarium and then I go back out and start a siphon on the other side on this bit, trying to avoid a mouthful of nasty mucky water and then it goes into the drain down here I have a little drain piece which runs along that pipe and down into the drain down there If I wanted to do a bit of a gravel vac on the end of this hose uh, here I would uh, take off the, the guard and just kind of wiggle it all over the substrate. So at this stage I usually take a second to take my daily reminder that it's never a good idea to mix sand and gravel because it will all do this eventually. And next I will have a look at all the equipment. So the lights are off at the moment but down here I'll have some filter floss in the sump. We'll change that over. Give all the biomedia bags and stuff a bit of a shake, make sure they're happy siphon out some of that water, give the plants a bit of a trim and then refill. So we'll come back when we're at that stage. So we've given everything a wipe down, we've cut a few plants back, mostly left everything alone, it's just really going to be a quick water change today. I've done my tests, nothing's out of the ordinary and as much as I'm doing my tests, I'm not doing my tests necessarily to be completely shocked that oh my god I've got three parts per million ammonia um, it's just so as I can see any trends over time so I'll put them all into a spreadsheet and look at them that way some people like I say you'll get the people who say I can tell by looking at my tank whether there's something wrong and that is true to an extent I can tell by looking at my tank if something's going wrong what I can't do is tell by looking at my tank whether my nitrates are 10 parts per million or 40 parts per million I really need to, I'm human, I need to rely on my test kits for that over time, obviously, if you get a horrendous build-up of algae, you can go, yeah, my nitrates are high, but I'm trying to catch it before we get to the horrendous build-up of nitrates. Done the siphon, given a bit of a, not a gravel back, a gravel shugle, if you like, because it's sand. I've checked my sump, I've changed my filter floss, I've checked my dozing pump, it's still got fertilizers to doze, I've checked all the media, still in place, there's no weird things going on down there, and now I'm refilling. It's not a massively complex procedure here. Um, a lot of people will say when they start keeping discus, oh, I'd love to keep discus, but I don't know if I can handle the commitment to the water changes or to the maintenance. This is it. There's not much more to it than this other than giving them a nice good diet. There's no nothing here that you wouldn't do in a normal tank other than I am doing this every week, whether they need it or not. And that's probably the only difference between my view on this and maybe someone like Bob Steenfots, where he might not do this quite as frequently, but I am a discus keeper and we will not be told otherwise. You do need to change water. So some of the other reasons people will give about changing water, certainly in the discus world, is that as well as getting rid of things like nitrates, you are also replenishing some of the... Um, the trace elements in there. There can be hormonal issues with fish. If you have fish breeding or fish dressing, they can release hormones into the water, which can affect the growth of the other fish, for instance. So the more you change water, the less effect that can have. Um, as well as if you're just constantly topping up and relying on evaporation for water changes, the things like the hardness, because the salts and things won't evaporate, they will build up over time. So. I, it is a special case. I do have tanks where, for instance, the tanks in my office, I do not change them every week. I change them maybe once a month um, or maybe every three weeks. Whereas these guys, they get a change all the time. The tanks that I've got in my fish room, they get constant water changes. So they're always on, they're on an automatic water change. 
that's because they're generally breeding projects or some other kind of thing where it's not a time for me to sit back and just enjoy them. I'm doing it for a reason. I'm trying to grow fish. I'm trying to breed fish. I'm trying to do something a bit different. If I just had a tank in my living room like this, I might not be so inclined to worry about an auto water change system. But for here, I think it fits perfectly. And I think that's the key thing I'm trying to say is it's not a one size fits all solution. It's a one size fits your solution. So whatever your way of keeping your fish is probably the right way to keep the fish. If you're having problems, by all means address them and try some stuff out. But if you've got a schedule and it works for you, then it's the right schedule. So there we go, all done on this tank. The whole process took about 45 minutes or so, maybe five minutes of actual effort. The rest of it was just waiting for it to fill up. So not that big a deal, not that big a commitment to do water changes for discus. And then I guess my final thoughts on water changes in general are not all that far away from what other videos have been saying. So it's just about understanding the context of what we mean by that. It's very different requirements from a brand new tank that you're setting up than a tank that's been established and running for a year. Very different requirements from a bare bottom tank to a very heavily planted tank. And all those things really determine what it is you want to do. So my advice is find something that works for you. Um, test your water, understand what's going on with your water chemistry. Understand what you have as your kind of baseline before you start messing with it. Because a water change is messing with your water. Especially if you're adding chemicals and doing lots of pH buffers and adding calcium and trying to get certain numbers. Never a good idea. Uh, in my tank, I know this works for me. I know this schedule works for me. You'll find one that works for you too. So although I, on a thumbnail, it might look good to say, keep doing water changes. Keep doing water changes in a way that works for you. Understand what's going on and work within that. Don't go chasing numbers. Don't go arbitrarily, arbitrarily changing water. Understand what your requirements are for your aquarium and then you won't go far wrong. As always, let me know in the comments if you've got any particular tips or tricks or you disagree with any of this or you agree with any of this. Let me know and we'll have a discussion about it. You can join me in the live stream on Friday evenings at 9 o'clock in the UK. And you can call me out on this and tell me I'm wrong or agree with me and tell me I'm right. Either way, if you click the subscribe button if you like this kind of thing, that really helps me out. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.